it's time for another mail day with Bearded Thinker. Let's look at some of the packages that arrived in last couple of weeks. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let's see what we have here. I think I know definitely one uh, item what's inside, but the other I have no clue. So two of them. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, I was really waiting for this one. The last batch or the first batch where everybody received them. I unfortunately didn't receive them. They were out of stock. Adapters should be here. Yeah, adapters are here. Nice, nice, nice. Where is charging port? Ah, here it is. Reset charging port. Nice, nice. Okay, so yeah, uh, as you can see, this is the thermostatic radiator valve or smart valve from Shelly. So here is the Tado one. Where is the display? It's here. So this is the Tado one. Tado one is a lot smaller. You have two batteries here. And this one has built-in rechargeable battery. We have display here. Charging port here. It's nice. It is a lot bigger. But that shouldn't be the problem. I'm really looking forward to playing with this. Let's check the web listing. This is the web listing for the Shelly TRE. By the way, it is still located on my desk. I did install it a couple of times just for a couple of tests and I still haven't made a video about it. I'm not even sure if I will be pushing a separate video or I will be doing some generic video on the heating system and maybe I will then compare it to the other solutions. In terms of the quality, the build quality is really good. And I would also say that the plastic of this TRV or smart thermostatic valve is much better than the Tado one. Although Tado one is a bit smaller and a bit lighter. Of course, the negative side about the Tado one is that Tado one does need or does require replacing batteries at least once a season. But this one you can simply recharge when it depletes. So it's much easier because at least once or twice in the last couple of years, I didn't have spare batteries for the Tado smart thermostatic valve. The one big thing about this one or the Zigbee one that I did review a couple of months or even a year ago or Tado one is each and every one of them is just a part of the system and it's not the solution, but it's part of the solution. Same thing goes for the Shelly, as for the Tado, as for Moes, a smart thermostatic valve. They all require something that will be hooked up directly to your heater or boiler or whatever you are using to heat up the water inside the radiators. This is just a smart plug. It has two functions. One is to control the flow of the water in the radiator. 100% open, maximum flow, closed, no flow and by that also regulated the temperature. But the second functionality of each of the smart thermostatic valves is call to heat or requesting heat from the boiler. So it means that you at least have to have some additional component that will be hooked up directly to your whatever boiler you are using. This can be either complex solutions such as Netatmo, Tado or something like that, but this can also be a very simple solution. You can, for example, use Shelly Relay here, where the Shelly Relay will be triggered when there is a call to heat. I know it's not the best solution, but it may be the cheapest one and also it should work. I will not go into much more details about it because yeah, it's Wi-Fi operated. So even if you do not have Zigbee network, Z-Wave network, LoRa network or proprietary such as Tado network, you can use it on your normal Wi-Fi network. 
it says that it has long battery life. But remember, this long battery life is actually calculated on the length of the heating season. We already mentioned rechargeable battery, precise temperature measurement, but also don't forget, you can also hook up to your system some external temperature or humidity meter and then use or calculate or ignore this one inside the valve itself and use that one as a trigger point for your smart valve. If you are interested in the product, currently the price is 79 euros for the Shelly TRV or 65 euros 90 cents if you do not have to pay VAT. Let's check the next item. Let's look what we have here. Um, I had to pay duties or whatever for this package. It was around 30 kunas, so 4 euros extra. More magnets. And yeah, these magnets will be used again for my SMD components, holders. I ran out of magnets, so most of those boxes, instead of three magnets, have two magnets. And yeah, I'll need to insert the missing ones inside. I do need a screwdriver to insert it to temporarily widen it. And that's it. So yeah, just pure basic magnets for my boxes for SMD components, which are really nice because I have tons of them. These are of course not all. So for example, when I need components for the project, I just pick up components that I need, put them together, take with me and then return them to a drawer where I keep them. Let's check the web listing and I will also be leaving a link to these in the video description. Magnets are fun, and this is the web listing that I probably already featured in this video. Once again, I bought uh, items from this store, shop 5880388, so don't mistake it for the shop 5780388, it's a different store. Uh, I bought once again, I think, 100 pieces, I don't know how, but I really go through them very fast. And once again, I've been using these in my SMD components holder. It really is nice solution. I reprinted all the cases in ABS. They are now printed with much better quality, not just in terms of material, but also print quality. And I'm very happy for it. I still have a few of them left. I don't know, about 30, 40. So yeah, uh, I will have to order more. And these are not the only magnets I'm buying. I also bought some other, I think six by threes or something like that, which I use for the printer. Yeah, for the printer. Price currently is three euros and 36 cents with the shipping cost of one euro 26. So for four euros and 60 cents, you get hundred pieces of this rare earth magnets but really they are they are good um they can chip away and i did manage to damage at least one or two but i would say that this is one or two of around 400 500 that have passed through my hands in the last two years let's jump straight to the next item let's check this package huh Fast detection of abnormal data line. Power in, which great. Looks like I have power in here. And then you have lightning type C, micro type C and type A. So what this is used for? You take any USB cable and you plug it in and this one says that we only have vcc and ground no data plus minus or cc cable i've seen a lot of rant on the twitter about cables let me just power bank keeps shutting down because the load is too low so um 
This one is used to test if your cable is data cable or not. And I've seen a lot of ranting on the internet. People get cable, then when they need to do the data transfer, the cable is power only. So with this ingenious device, you can test any cable. I always suspected that this one was power only. Let's see this one. I think that this one is damaged and power on. And yeah, it looks like one LED here is not working. Let me turn it over. You see the blinking. So there is a damage in the cable. You need this device. Even if you don't need it, you really do need this device. So let's check the Bible listing. I was so happy when I found this solution. I know there are a lot of other or similar solutions. If you are interested to verify if your cable can do fast charge or super fast charge or Samsung thinks this is the fastest charging uh, cable that you need for them, it, there are other boards that you need to buy because this one will not give you these values. What this board will tell you is A, if this cable that you are testing is power only, and B, if it is data only, if there is some problem with the cable. I did already go through all of my cables and no, I did not throw away any power cables because all those power cables are really great for powering my WLED projects. So when I have to power WLED strip somewhere in the apartment hooked up to ESP32, I use the old phone charger or I buy those chargers that allow charging up to four or five devices and I use power only cables. So there is a life for those cables too. But on the other hand, now I have separated all my data cables and I also did throw away every single cable that did have any kind of issue with it. The price for 3 euros and 70 cents, you get device that will save you a lot of time and headaches when troubleshooting projects. I know, at least two or three times so far I thought that I burned my ESP board or that I did something who knows what and it ended up that the board was just not showing in my system because yes, I was using power only and no data cable. By the way, if you have any other similar board that you think that the world should know about, drop me a comment down in a comment section below or leave a link in the greatest finds on the Discord server. Let's jump to the next item. Let's look at this package. Yeah, these boxes have seen better days, but hopefully what's inside is working. So these are the TUIA compatible Zigbee temperature humidity sensors. I hope that they do work with the Zigbee to MQTT. I haven't tested them. I have three of them and they will be installed in this box. So this is the filament box. The filament spool will go here. Uh, I still don't know if I will be putting dehumidifier inside but there will be zigbee temperature and humidity meter for each of those boxes so each of the filament boxes for the enraged rabbit carrot feeder will be receiving one of those sensors let's check the web listing yeah i know i really didn't need to buy those for 24 euros because there were much simpler solutions but the question is, why did I go for these two Yazigbi ones and not the Akara ones? The answer is really simple. I wanted to test these ones. I have a lot of Akara sensors and I never ever tested any Tuya Zigbee sensor. So this is my first ever Tuya Zigbee sensor and I'm really happy, although I have to buy three more. The device itself doesn't include or any of those sensors and as I said or as you have seen I received three of them doesn't include any battery so count that as an extra cost that you have to calculate in the total cost of the sensor. I did get a lot of batteries, rechargeable batteries in IKEA when I was there last time a couple of weeks ago but still didn't have enough for all of those so I have two of the sensors with the rechargeable batteries and two of them with some 
old AAA batteries I had lying around. I added it to the Home Assistant via Zigbee to MQTT. The devices were recognized by the system, so the converters already exist. I didn't test it with the ZHA, although I do believe that it should also work with the ZHA. Would I recommend it? Well, if you look at price of one, it's very similar to the Akara ones. And uh, Akara ones are much smaller. I don't say that they are much more accurate or less accurate, either this one or that one. But the size of the Akara ones is much smaller and I like it more than this one. As I said, since I already bought three, I will buy three more and uh, I will cover all my needs for these types of the sensors. For the other sensors in my apartment, I will still probably go for the Akara ones that I currently use. Let's check the last item for today. Let's look at this package. This is ESP32 C3 dev kit board and uh, I got two just to have spare one but I will be using this one for the uh, workshop that will be held by the home assistant dev team and uh, they will show us how to enable matter already today or how you can enable matter today even now with the home assistant USB C see no it's micro it's micro port here so for for that workshop you need one of those because there will be a firmware for that and i think that they also released now the firmware for the m5 atom whatever board i will be posting a link here too to, to that one also and you also need a directly connected bluetooth dongle to your home assistant so no you cannot use if you have external such as ESP32 board with the Bluetooth support, you cannot use it there. The Home Assistant itself has to have a Bluetooth capability. So either you already have yellow, I don't know if you are Louis probably, or for example, Intel Nook that has onboard Bluetooth, or you can of course use the dongle. So for this, I ordered TP-Link dongle, but it still hasn't arrived. So yeah, these are the two expressive ESP32 C3 dev kits and let's check the web listing and I will be also posting a link to the event uh, where you can learn more about Matter and how it can be enabled in Home Assistant. I posted here because still there are 23 pieces on the warehouse in Poland for this item. And I know people were looking around and buying all the stock that is on Mauser or different Odigiki or some different sites. And if you still haven't found where you can buy this item, check this site for the ESP3 C3 dev board. And this dev kit or dev board will be used by home assistant devs on the event or workshop where they will be showing you on how you can embed or how you can activate or how you can have matter access in the home assistant. TME has for eight euros, still ESP32 C3 dev kit, M1 Espressive. This is the original one, comes in original box and that's it. On Monday, I think on Monday I ordered mine, there were 51 pieces in the warehouse uh, before I ordered two of mine. And this is it for this mail day with Bearded Tinker. I really do hope that you did find something useful for some of the future projects that you may have. By the way, if you yourself found something really interesting that you want to share with us, don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below. Or if there is a link, you can go to the Discord server and post link in the Greatest Finds channel in the Discord server. If you did like this video, please give me a like because it not just means a lot to me, but it really helps with the funny YouTube and YouTube channel algorithms. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future videos and updates and of course the streams. And before I wrap up this video, I really would like to thank everybody who is supporting me and has become a YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to everybody who subscribed, liked or watched my videos. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button down below. And this is it. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, 
Bye-bye and have fun.